Yo, what's up, what's up? Petrowski here, and I actually just... A lot of stuff happened, so... I recorded, like, a solid 16 minutes of footage where I just, like, didn't have my mic on, my audio play, which is really funny. And also, this game was meant to be a showing of Choice Band Boothalot, which was a viewer request and the video that I put up where I was like, hey, what Pokemon comps would you guys like to see in ranked? Like, please tell me so I can throw up some games of something interesting that you might want to see, etc., etc. So the Boothalot you can see in my inventory or in my, in my party is actually a Boothalot. That's choice band, and it has it's, it's re it has reckless ability, which increases the power of um, recoil moves, and it has like wild charge and and, uh, and head charge. So it's a pretty cool Buffalon. I actually didn't think I have one, but anyway, I do want to focus on this game and get into this game because this game was fucking hilarious. This game was pretty insane. I'm really sad the voice didn't come over for this. So I made a mistake. Turn one here. This is this is one of the few Pokemon in the tier where I, where I should have trick roomed first. And then reflected on the second turn where I had um, the Trick Room speed. Kind of losing a turn of Trick Room, which is like I really never want to try to do. I never want to do that if I have to, if I can, you know. I want to avoid it if possible. Um, but I ended up making a mistake there and I lose my clay doll basically for nothing besides a little bit of scouting. And I really want to find a way to bring in my Bufalant here. Like this game is about showing off the Bufalant, but spoiler alert, that never happens. I kind of bring in this cow, and you guys might not have ever seen this cow before on this channel, but I used to love this cow. This cow used to be, like, my favorite competitive Pokemon that I owned. It's a 4x31 mil tank with 31 HP, 31 attack, 31 defense, and 31 special defense, just with, like, 17 special attack and 17 speed, um, which I kind of wish the speed was either 0 or 31 or, like, higher or lower. Kind of in the middle makes it a little weird for sure. Um, but this Miltech is very funny, where its job is just, it's kind of a cleric, it has heal bell, but at the same time, it's almost like, it's like a solo one-man army. It's almost a, a cleric just for itself. So here I'm thinking, like, I can decently safely set up against this physical attacker Scolipede, and it's not a big deal. The only thing I'm kind of worried about on his team would be Dustnor, because it's a ghost type, and he does swap that in now. But what a lot of people don't realize is that Miltank actually gets the Scrappy ability, uh, which is fantastic, and lets him hit ghost types even with normal. Which I, look, I even explained here, and it's very nicely laid out, but too bad my voice didn't come through properly. So even though it does say immune on the body slam, it will work properly, and it will go through, which you can see here from the Scrappy ability. And I do get the para. This is probably the most important part of the entire match, which I want to really, you know, overstate and really bold, boldify, whatever, you know, it's, it's amplify. Um, getting this para is really, 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 really huge. It allows me to go for another curse. It also makes me faster than him. And he also gets the para proc. So one of the luckiest parts about this battle was this para on this Dutch Nord. It probably changed the flow of the battle. If he didn't get paired, he probably would have Will-O-Wisp me, and then I get to two-shot him. I get, I get an extra curse up, and I get to two-shot him. Super, super clean, super, super nice. Um, if I didn't get that para, he probably would have Will-O-Wisp me, which would have slowed me down. I would have had to heal Bella in it, but it might have thrown off my turns enough to where he would have been able to like pain split me or do some other sort of like damaging effect that would have hurt me. So this is another huge threat. The Hitmonlee, because obviously he's fighting type and he can do super effective damage against my cow, especially with high jump kick, which is a very high power move. But thankfully, I just one-shot him. Obviously, if I don't one-shot him there, he kills me like every time because he has 53% damage against me with the high jump kick. So it was either kill him, it was one-shot him there, or hope to god he misses the high jump kick. I think it's like a 95% accuracy or a 90% accuracy move high jump kick, so... It was either he, I have to one-shot him, or I hope that he misses. The Slowking was a little more difficult than I thought, but he's, pre I mean, he's pretty bulky and does a little bit more damage. Like, 30% is solid. Like, he does a lot more damage than I thought, but I'm EV trained, 252 special defense, and I think I'm defense nature, though. I think I'm impish. Yeah, I think that's correct. I think the cow is impish, but yeah, from here on out, dude, this entire match is just a cow versus the world, and I think this Pokemon is incredible. 
I think the cow is super underrated. Being able to milk drink here to almost full and then leftovers to get to full, like stuff like that is super nice. It's just, yeah, I love this Pokemon. I'm a huge fan. I used to use it consistently. Like, it was like my favorite comp Pokemon. I ran it on every single team forever. Um, it's just the definition of a one-man army. Being able to heal bell anything that status is it. Being able to milk drink. Being able to infinitely curse up. And then body slam everything, even... Excuse me. Body Slam everything, even the ghost types with Scrappy, is just really funny to see play out. And pretty crazy. Um, it's just a crazy game. This game was just funny because, once again, I was supposed to show off Buffalant, but ended up just being a Miltank show. So, I wanted to throw that game... I mean, it's, still, it's still a great game, so I wanted to throw it up in some capacity. Here, I think the only... I don't... Like, literally, at this point, I'm like... I think he just needs to FF. Like, I don't see a way he wins this. Um, one of the few ways he could win this would be getting a solid pain split off me from his stun fist. Stun fist can actually learn pain split, so he could do like a, he could do like a paralyze pain split combo with that, where he like paras me, um, he pain splits me to like low HP, I get parried, and then he can like finish me off with like with like stalled or something that would hit like specially special something that would hit special defensive damage because I'm cursing. Um, that was also the best. Time for Gunk Shot to miss. That You guys might have missed that because I'm talking a ton and kind of not focusing super hard on the what's happening. It's just not important too much because I'm just at such a strong point at this stage. But yeah, Stun Fist. So here I'm like, Stun Fist and Skullipede are the two things that maybe could stop me. I'm kind of assuming that Skullipede has close combat or superpower, but I don't think it did because he never clicked it all game. Um, but I was kind of playing around that or looked at looking for that at the very least. But he does Thunder Wave me here, which is pretty good. Uh, I think the best play for him here, I do think, is to like Thunder Wave, and then try to try to get hit and get because I don't I can't one shot the stun because it's a little a little too bulky, um, and then try to get like a good pain split off. But he ends up just swapping. He pairs me and swaps back to the Scolipede, and here I'm thinking like, do I go for the heal bell or do I go for the body slam? Like, like so my my thought process there is. If I heal Bell and he does more than 50% damage to me, like, I just get two-shot anyway, so I might as well just go for the Body Slam and hope to one-shot. Like, my, I, think, I think that's the right play. I think the right play there is to go for the the Body Slam. And he Swords Dances here. And this is what I'm also like, okay, he does have a chance to live. Like, but then I heal Bell off my Para, so it's it's kind of gone from there. But his last win con still technically was what I thought. It was. It was still like a Scolipede and Stun Fist combo. I was very scared of like Swords Dance, Super Power, Close Combat, Scolipede. Um, and he could crit. So another huge way he could win. I think he should have... This was something I complained about live in the audio was he shouldn't have swapped out here. He shouldn't have swapped to Scolipede to Stun Fist because his last win con, in my eyes, is just him critting. He has a um, conceding there, but his last win con there, in my opinion is him just hoping to crit with Scolipede, because if he crits with Scolipede, he just hits through all of the curse defense that I've built up, right? So I think his best bet there is to Swords Dance once, and then hopefully crit with... I don't know I don't know what moves he has. Hopefully he has some sort of... something better than Megahorn, but I, don't, I guess he didn't because he didn't show it, but... I, he just has to hope to crit with Megahorn there. I think it's his best way to win that game, but... Yeah, that was a pretty funny game. Um... Absolute cow devastation, absolute cow destroyer. It was pretty fucking funny. It meant to show off the Buffalon, but didn't get around to swapping in the 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 bull because I was I was too busy winning the game with the cow instead of swapping the bull. So what 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 are the what's the irony in that, you know? But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'm gonna peace out. Try to get some more games. Have a good one. See you guys.